Now, wouldn't it be nice to make a gun that kind of like looks like this from a reference? Yes. So, what I did is I went ahead and did most of the work. I wanted to walk myself through the workflow first as far as um, how to teach it. Okay. So, this concept produced this 3D shape. So, I just want to kind of show you that um, it is possible it's very easy and you just kind of let go a little bit and you notice I did change up the fact that this laser sight is not there I you know there's a difference between usability and non usability and that's the usability that really makes a piece of um, 3d art so you want it to be believable um, functional and still keep interest, you know, like this. The atypical barrel coming out of the thing, please, come on. We have to have the rail pistol or whatever, you know what I mean? So this thing shoots a magical laser beam of some sort. Um, of course, it has the 1010X scope and a big old trigger. Okay, so let's kind of look at how this was produced. And I should kind of break this down too. Um, let's kind of look at this. Let's and I like to reverse engineer stuff. So let's mesh separate. Okay. Important to know that in most cases nowadays, a single mesh is not needed. And what that means is we can keep our polygon counts very low. Because if I have this part, that's a separate part. I have this part's a separate part and these two parts three parts are all separate parts each part has you know like this one has a very you know a lot of detail to it so this one's gonna make up a lot of polygons okay same with you'd be surprised this part that makes up a lot of polygons because of its structure um the scope not so many polygons I mean really a scope is a scope it's just a round tube same with the butt of it, okay? And I'm always worried about three. Three on the keyboard to smooth these out just to kind of see what they look like at the next level. That way when I do decide to smooth them and then poly reduce them, um, it makes sense. Okay, so we're going to be concentrating on a couple of these forms and I'm not going to be doing the entire workflow for you because you know, as a student, I really want you to take your concept and concentrate on it, not mine. Okay? And I want you to make mistakes. It's important to make mistakes. So we're going to kind of look at this one. We'll try to produce it head for head, but I promise you that it will probably be different a little bit. And the first thing I do is think overall shape so that being said what is the largest shape here I'll take a box and I'll take the vertices in the side view and just kind of go like this okay now that's a pretty good shape right there But I'm going to insert an edge loop here and here. Okay, that way I can have these move around. And I'm not, with silhouette um, modeling, I'm not so worried about my material being transparent. That's not important. So I'm going to lower this down just a little bit maybe take this one up there we go perfect maybe keep all these linear like that okay now it's obvious that I have this piece coming off the top all right. So what I want to do is make that piece look like it's attached to the first piece. 
And how do I do that? Well, that's very easy. First, you develop the piece just as if it's not attached, as or as it's attached. So extrude it. Bring these way up and start manipulating them. W on the keyboard. Give some shortcuts here. There we go. I would say that maybe I should move this back a little bit. And then take this face and extrude it this way. And the reason why I do that is because sometimes mixing forms is a tricky bear. You're going to learn it as you go. There's no doubt about it. Why I did that is just my um, personal experience with it. So I'm going to insert an edge loop here. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make it so these come out and maybe they're hollow. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Like this. Alright, so meet me in the next video where I start modeling some more on this.